Okay, let's just jump right into our rigging here. Let's add a new null object to our scene. Let's make that into a circle display and up its radius and orient it along the X and Z axis. Let's make this green in color. All of our objects, all of our controllers in the middle are going to be green and on our left side are gonna be blue and right will be red. We'll call this character. We're gonna align our axis to our body uh, all the way to negative 100% in the Y. So that's gonna give us our axis point at the very bottom of our character. So we can grab all of our objects, put it in that character null, and then align our parent to our body. So our axis now, we can reset all to zero and our starting point for our rig will be from our zero point in the axis here. Let's grab our joint tool here. We're gonna enable uh, snapping. We're gonna enable axis snapping, intersection snapping, and vertex snapping while we do this. And we uh, control click and drag on our joint here for our hip and we'll continue up to our chest, our neck, and then the top of our head here. Perfect, and that's going to be our spine. Let's get it out of this root. I don't like to work in uh, root nulls there. So we have all of our joints here. Let's just rename them quickly. We can call this hip, chest, neck, head, and we'll, this will be the end. So we'll call this head end. Sure. Just make sure that we have some consistent naming. You know we are in our scene. Let's group all of our geography together and we'll call this all geo. Selecting all of our objects, uh, let's add these all to their own layer and we can call this geo. So when we're finished rigging, we can lock this all off. Select our joints and we'll create a new layer for our joints and we can call this joints as well. We'll be hiding this from our viewport once we finish up our rigging. Okay, well, let's carry on and add some more joints here. Um, let's get rid of the root null here. So deselect that. We'll start from our chest here and snap to that point. This will be our collarbone coming here and our shoulder. Let's go to our top view, down to our elbow. And then to our wrist. And that's as far as I want to go for the time being. Now, if I hold down seven on the number key while I'm moving a joint, it's not going to uh, affect the rest of the uh, joints in that hierarchy. So if I just wanna move around one joint without affecting the rest, hold down number seven and you can move that around. Let's just rename, rename these guys, L underscore collar, shoulder, elbow, and let's call this guy wrist. That works for now, great. Sure, uh, shoulder. All right, let's go uh, to our top view here. Let's go back to our joint and let's add the hand. So let's snap it to our wrist here. And we're gonna have pretty basic uh, hand controls here, just want a hand curl. So we'll have two joints uh, for our hand. And where is that? It's along our zero here. So let's snap it in place to our wrist here. And we can drag that under our wrist hierarchy. Let's call this L underscore hand. Let's call this hand mid and hand end, sure just so we know what everything is in our hierarchy here. All right, back to our joint tool. And let's add a thumb in. So let's snap it again to our uh, wrist here. And let's add a few joints for our thumb where we think we want our thumb to bend. Again, we started that in the zero axis along the Y. So let's just make sure we get it snapped in place to our wrist control. We can rename these to our L underscore thumb hierarchy, thumb mid, and let's call this thumb end. 
And we can grab this and place this under our wrist as well. So we've got uh, our left arm hierarchy all set up here and ready to go. Let's go back into our joint tool and we can make our leg. Let's just snap it into our hip here. Down to our knee. Our <clears throat> ankle or heel will be and then we're going to put one in the middle of our foot and then to the end so we can have a little bit of curl in our foot when we're lifting and uh, moving our leg around let's just uh, make sure everything's snapped into place here cool again holding down seven and dragging out our joint will only affect that joint let's just move this knee out until the middle of our geometry Yep, this is looking pretty good. Very basic bone structure, but uh, it's basically about all we need for uh, our, our simple character here. Just uh, you could follow along with my naming conventions here. Got a femur and a shin. Our heel, we'll call this guy toe. And we can call this toe end. Sure, that works for me. Let's just drag this down under our hip hierarchy. Got our chest here. And we can drag our arm under our chest. So we're all set up in our hierarchy. I actually don't want to have my hip, uh, my leg joints underneath my hip. I want that as separate uh, joints. And you'll see how this all comes together in a few moments here. So there's the left side of our character. Let's go back into our joint tool. Let's add a lower jaw. When we want this, we'll just have a joint here coming from the middle of our head and jaw, jaw end. And that will just be a basic control for our mouth open and close. And we'll drag this under our head bone here. Let's add all of these guys into our joint layer. Wonderful. Let's uh, freeze all of our coordinates here. I love doing that. Just freezing out all of our coordinates back to zero. So I have a starting place to get to. Let's add a new null to our scene. Uh, let's make this a circle as well. And let's bring up the radius. And we are going to snap this into place for our hip. Great. I said that very loud. I'm sorry. I'm excited about this. I suppose. So all of our uh, controls are going to be contained under our hip rotation here. We'll just call this uh, character control. We can drag our joints underneath that. Let's group our joints into a null object, we can just call this joints, add that to our layer as well. And let's freeze out all of our coordinates again. Freeze our coordinates on our character control and we can give it a color of green as well. And that's gonna control our uh, hip rotation and position. Let's add another circle into our scene here. And another null, and we're going to call this controls. So all of our uh, controller objects are going to be placed under this null. And let's orient that correctly and snap that into our chest here. Let's just bring the radius down just so we can you know, select it nicely in our scene. We'll color that green as well. We'll bring my radius back up a little bit here. And we can copy this guy out, bring him back under our controls, and we're going to snap this into our neck. And this will be our neck controller. And you can bring that radius down a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate this, and this will be our head controller. So I'm going to snap that right to the top of our neck there, to our joint here. Great. We're snapped in there. I'm just call this one head. And I'm going to make that editable, and I'm going to grab my points, and I'm going to actually pull this above 
my head geometry, but my axis point is still gonna uh, be centered around where that joint is. All right, we can also make this neck and chest circle editable as well. All right, we're gonna make some controllers for the arm. So I'm gonna grab my shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints here. And I'm gonna create an IK chain. And that's going to give me a wrist goal, which will uh, control my arm movement. This is an IK chain again. So let's set this to a uh, cube display. Let's give it a little more radius. Let's orient it in the XY. And it's uh, rotated around weird, so we can just uh, zero that out for the time being before we actually bind this to our character. And let's give that guy a blue color. Remember, left is blue, right is red uh, for our scene. And let's bring our radius down just a little bit, so this will be where we're uh, controlling our arm. And in our IK spline tag, we can add a pole, which will be where our elbow is aimed towards. I'm not going to move this in the scene yet until we finish binding or else my joints are gonna uh, start moving around. Let's just make that a, a sphere and give it a little bit of radius and we'll make that blue as well. Great, so we've got a pole and a goal for our arm. Let's zero out their coordinates. And let's mirror this to the right side. We are ready to go. We're in the XY, L underscore with R underscore tool. Let's mirror this guy. And looks like we've got a winner here. So we've got our left and right arm. Let's just uh, color these red for our right side controllers and drag that into our quick select options. So I've got controllers for both arms ready to go now. Okay, let's work on the leg here. I'm gonna grab my femur, my shin, and my heel, and I'm going to create an IK chain. That's gonna give me a goal for my leg as well. Now, let's just go to our side view here, and let's bring a cube into our scene, and let's position this around our left foot. This will be a controller for our heel of our foot. Let's just rough this into place here. And we'll bring it right down in the X axis and we'll get it to place over here. Cool. Now let's make that editable. And I'm going to call this L heel and I'm going to add a display tag onto it and we'll just uh, select lines just so we see the outline of that. It will be just an object that we can select in the scene for our controller. Let's give it a blue color and we can push and pull these points around to outline our foot a little nicer here so we know what it's attached to in the scene. Let's move its axis point. Uh, let's enable snapping and snap it right to our toe joint. And that's where we're going to be. Let's make sure that we're snapped to it. And we'll be rotating our controller around that joint, which will give us uh, some lift in the foot. Now let's duplicate that and we'll call this toe. We'll keep the axis point the same, but we will be grabbing all these points and let's just cover the front of the foot. Get these into position around our toe. And that will be rotating around that same joint as well. All right, let's add a null object in. To our scene here, and we can call this uh, leg controls. And we'll bring our left heel into here, and we can 
grab our leg controls and we're going to bring them into our character here. And let's add another null object into our scene. Let's enable snapping and we're going to snap that into our heel as well. And let's call this our left foot control. So this will move the up and down of our leg. Let's bring this into our leg controls. Our, our left heel and left toe can, can come under this left foot controller. Our goal we'll put under our left heel. So our, our controller will be the parent of that goal. And now if we find our leg joints here, our left heel, we will add a constraint to it, uh, PSR. And we'll just enable rotation, maintain original, duplicate that to the toe. And then our left heel will control our left heel and our left toe will control our left toe. Make sure we enable these guys and Let's just get something we can grab on to our, for our controller here. This cube looks all right. Maybe a sphere for the left foot. Just don't want it across the X axis. Yeah, let's go back to a cube. Let's just shrink it down so it's on the left side of our character here. And we'll color it blue as well. Awesome. Now let's zero out all of our coordinates. I'm usually pretty anal about uh, zeroing out all of my coordinates in my scene when I'm rigging. So if we lift up our foot controller, you can see we have a bend at the knee. Get that back down to zero. And we can rotate our feet. And if we select our controllers, see we have a lift on our foot. And you'll get an idea of how that's gonna work once we have our character geometry uh, binded to our rig here. In our IK tag, we're gonna add a pole. So this will be uh, where your knee is aiming towards in your scene. We are not going to move it at the moment. We're just gonna bring it into the leg controls, make it a sphere, and we'll make that blue as well. Great. So our hip, we can mirror now in the uh, rotate along the axis. We can mirror that. And here we have our right leg. Uh, it's has mirrored all of our controls over as well. Let's just uh, pull out our heel controller. And we are going to make a new null object. And this will be our right foot control. And all of our right foot controllers uh, can be placed underneath of it. We'll just make sure that we are snapped to our uh, right foot joint. Make sure it's snapped in there. Looks good. And let's freeze our coordinates on that again and let's bring in our right foot controls and our right, oh, let's bring in our right toe as well. Freeze our coordinates again. And we have some right foot controls. Let's give uh, our null Something to grab onto. We can make that a cube as well. Bring up its radius. And we're going to make these all red in color for the right side of our body. And our right pole can be red as well. And we have a right leg control. Great, and we can uh, rotate our 
controllers around that snaps back because our pole is and our knee will be pulling those out after we get our geometry binded up here. Let's get ready to bind up our character here. We'll just select our body geometry and we're going to uh, select all of our joints except for all of the end joints. We can control click and deselect those. Make sure our body is selected as well. And we could go to bind and that's going to bind all of our joints to our uh, character's geometry. And let's bind our hair in there as well. We'll just select our hair and we only need our head bone or joint. And we can bind that as well. Finished, right? Not quite at the moment, but we're getting closer. Okay, now those poles that we did create, we can move them out into place. And you see our arms twisting just a little bit. And let's zero out our coordinates on those and then our leg poles we can uh, pull these guys out as well and we can zero our coordinates and that's where our legs and arms will be pointing to Let's see we still need to constrain our eyes and teeth to our character but we're getting a little closer all right, we're gonna select all of our controls and let's add them to their own layer. We can call this controls. So we've got all of our objects in their layer. Let's add a constraint to our chest joint and let's maintain the original and just have our rotation on. And we are, our target is going to be our chest controller. And we can do the same thing for the neck. We're gonna add a Character constraint, PSR, take out position, maintain original, and our neck will be the target. And we'll do the same thing for the head. PSR, rotation, drag in our head. Nope, we need to uh, maintain our original before we bring it in, and there we go. So when our controllers along our uh, rotation, we have our rotation uh, being controlled here for all of our controllers. Look at that. All right, let's get back to working on these arms for our uh, hands. We want to be able to uh, control the rotation. So we'll add a character constraint to our wrist PSR constraint as well. Maintain original takeoff position, and our target is going to be our left wrist goal. Go back to our wrist goal, and now we have our rotation on our hand. Great. Now we can go over to the right side of the body and do the same thing we just did. A character constraint, PSR, maintain original, takeoff position, and our target will be our right wrist goal. I'm going to go up to our goal here and check it out. I'm going to add some uh, Expresso controls for our hand opening and closing in our thumb curl. So I'm going to add user data onto our left wrist goal. Let's make a new group and we'll call this our left hand control. Great. And underneath that, I'll add new data. Let's make that a float slider and let's just go by real. Our minimum will be negative 100 and our maximum will be 100. Let's call this left hand curl. Great. And let's just control drag that and this will be our left thumb curl. Great. So I have my sliders there. 
So on my left wrist goal, let's add an espresso tag to our left wrist goal. I'm going to drag in my goal. And on my output node, I'm going to add the left hand curl and left thumb curl. Now I am going to cheat this with uh, some pose morphs. On my left wrist, I'm going to add a character tag, a pose morph tag. Let's make that hierarchical and rotation. So in our first pose, we'll call this our hand curl. And let's go into our joints and we will rotate our hand into our uh, hand close position. We will be uh, smoothing out our uh, joint binding. As you can see, our mesh is pretty deformed there, but we'll, uh, we'll get that smoothed out. So let's just curl up our uh, hand joints here to our 100% closed position. Let's add another pose in, and this will be for our left thumb curl. So we can call this thumb curl. And let's uh, rotate that around into our 100% position. Again, we have our mesh distorting, but we'll, uh, we'll fix that up. Let's just get this into a spot where we would like our thumb to be curled to. Let's switch over to animate, drag our pose morph tag into our espresso window. And I'm going to add in a uh, calculate node, a range mapper. So espresso calculate range mapper because I am going from real numbers uh, to percentage numbers. So in our output range, we're going to percent. In our input lower, we're going from negative 100 to 100. Remember our slider values. So our output's going to be negative 100% to 100%. And on our pose morph input, we'll just add our uh, hand curl strength and our thumb curl strength. And we will connect all of those up here. And when we select our left hand controller, we have our sliders controlling our hand curl. Lots of fun. And you can see how you could do that with all the individual fingers on the hand if you wanted to. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that we did to our left hand. I'm just gonna speed through this, so have a watch through again if you need to. Okay, now we're ready to smooth out some of our joints here. So we have our weights manager uh, selected here. Let's grab our uh, body and let's turn it over to our shading mode on. Let's hide the rest of our objects, but our body. Selecting all of the joints, I am going to grab the weight tool and we're going to go into our smoothing mode and let's just bump up the radius on our weight tool here. And what we're gonna do is just blend all of our weighting for our joints here. Let's turn visible only off, just so we're smoothing out everything. And so basically where all the joints connect, we're just gonna paint over all of them and smooth them out. Uh, you'll also, during this process, wanna Get your character into different positions and, and see where uh, see where your weighting is off because um, you're going to run into a, a few issues here and there. It's never 100% from the initial binding. So let's just smooth in our shoulders and our elbows and our hands and let's just see how our hands uh, curl and how the binding looks in that. So. Let's just smooth off all our hands. I'm gonna fast forward through all this. You can uh, get the ideas you're following along here.
All right, now that all of our binding looks pretty smooth here, let's get our uh, teeth rigged up here properly into our jawbone opening and closing. And we'll add a nice little slider so our mouth will open and close. Let's add a constraint tag to our upper teeth. We'll add a parent tag. Uh, let's maintain the original. And let's just drag into our joints and find our target here. Target for our upper teeth is going to be our head bone. Let's just rotate that around so we can see that our upper jaw is following the rotation nicely in our head. Side to side, back and forth, great. Now let's add a uh, constraint tag to our lower teeth parent that, maintain the original, and our joint is going to be our jaw. So if I go to my, uh, if I rotate around my head here, you can see my teeth rotate nicely, and if I go to my jaw and rotate it up and down, look at that, I've got my mouth opening and closing with my teeth following along nicely in that rotation. All right, let's just zero that out. Now, I want to add a slider on my head control for my mouth opening. So let's just add a new group, pull it out, and this will be our mouth open close. And I like, um, let's try this again, mouth open close. I like to use the float sliders as we did before in the hand. Let's just make that a real number and our Maximum is going to be a 100, and our minimum will be negative 100. Okay, so let's go into our jaw and see what degree we're at in the P rotation that we want it to be fully open. So that will be our 100% value. Somewhere around negative 20-ish. That looks pretty good for me. And how do we want it to be closed? Right around 4%? Yeah, 4 or 5% will be the opposite end of our slider value. So, for our head control, let's add in an espresso tag, just like we did in the hands. We'll drag in our head controller. The output for the mouth open close we'll have on the output. We'll drag our jaw joint in and on its input side, actually, let's just add our range mapper in before we forget, because we'll need to convert our real numbers to degrees. For our input, we'll have our rotation P value uh, our input will be user-defined. Our output will be degrees because that's our rotation value. So our input lower is negative 100 on our slider. And our input upper will be 100. That's our slider values. And remember, we thought negative 20 and 4 worked for us. Let's attach all of these together. And now when we go into our head and go to our mouth control, where are we here? There we go. Grab our head and our mouth control. If we slide back and forth on our slider, there's our mouth opening and closing. That looks pretty good to me. We're getting there. Uh. All right, let's get to work on the eyes now. I'm gonna pull out my eye from the symmetry object. I'm gonna pull out my FFD deformer from outside of my eye as well. And let's just group those together and call this left eye. I don't have my FFD as a child of my sphere anymore. Let's add in a circle. This is gonna where we're gonna aim our eye towards. With our circle, we're gonna select our sphere as well. And we wanna position that into the same position as our eye. We'll add a PSR constraint. Now we can delete that tag, make it XZ, bring our radius down and this is gonna be where our eye is aiming towards. So we'll call this left eye aim. 
can bring that down into my controls. And what I'm going to do is pull this I aim out in its Y axis relative to the scene where I think will be a good position to be able to have that control within our scene. All right, let's make a rectangle uh, that we'll place that I aim inside of. But right now, I will just make sure they are in the same position in my scene. So we'll add a PSR constraint to that rectangle. We can get rid of that now. And we'll zero out our rotation values and zero that out in the X value. We can bring our width and height right down. So this is going to be the controller that both of the left and right eye aim will be inside of. Okay, we can call this our eye control. Let's drag our left eye aim into there. Let's freeze out all of our coordinates as I do like to do. Now, I'm gonna drag my FFD and sphere outside of my group again. Let's grab it and take it right outside of our geometry just because the way the FFD deformer works, it's kind of hard to mirror. So we have to go a roundabout way of getting it over to the right side. Let's group that eye again. Let's call this our left eye. And I can Control, drag that out, and we'll, this will be our uh, right eye, not our left eye, our right eye. And we will just enter in the opposite values in our X, in our H rotation, and our B rotation. And now we have a mirrored right eye. Our left eye aim, we can also mirror. So we have a right eye aim. Oh, that's not on the right axis. Let's change this to X, Y axis. Mirror that guy. Now we have a right eye aim. And let's add our color again back in. And these guys, blue for left, red for right. And our middle is going to be green. Again, great, now there's our eye controllers. All right, we can bring our eyes back down into our geometry. I just need to pull them out to get them positioned correctly in our scene there. And on our, uh, let's just open this guy up. On our left eye geometry, I'm gonna add a constraint. Let's take the enable off for now. Our aim, we want to be in the uh, Y axis. And our target is going to be our left eye aim. Now, if I move around my left eye aim, my eye should, in theory, uh, follow where that aim is in our uh, project here. Oh, I actually have to enable this constraint. Great. And let's add our priority to one. Now, if I move around my eye aim, look at that, we've got our pupil aiming towards our target. We can zero those all out and then our eye is looking straight ahead there. We'll follow the same process for our right eye. Add an aim constraint in the Y axis. Our target is going to be our right eye aim. Make sure to enable that guy, set his priority back to one. And if I move that around, look at that. We have our eyes looking towards where we want them to in our scene. We can always zero these all back to get back to our starting point. And if I move around my rectangle control here, that will move both of our eye controllers our eye aim controllers in the same direction. Let's just make sure these are all layered up nicely in our scene here. 
Now, I'm gonna add a restriction tag on both of these. We're gonna limit their position. I don't want it moving anywhere in our y-axis. Let's just type in some arbitrary numbers here. Let's see what negative 100 to 100 in the x looks like. That's not bad. Let's give it a little bit more. And let's keep it consistent. That's not too bad. Uh, and then in the z axis on our control, let's see what 100 to 100 is. Got a wonky eye going on here. But it's doing what we want that to do in our scene. Cool. Let's zero our aim back up and let's do the same thing for our right eye. I think we can just copy that over and be in the position that we want to be in. All right, let's zero that back out. Great. All right, let's just group these eyes together. We can call them eyes. Let's add them to a subdivision surface. Smooth them out a little bit. And we'll also add, want to add some restrictions onto our uh, main eye controller here, just so we're not moving it back and forth in the Z direction, and so we're limiting it in the X and Y axis. Let's just kind of figure out where, how far we want it to go. So let's add another protection tag, set it to limit. In the Z, we don't want it to move anywhere. Uh, so let's try negative 250 to 250 and negative 200 to 200. So. We are moving, oh, we're getting stuck there. We are getting stuck in our Y. Let's have, oh, it's still set to zero. If I go to negative 200 there, all right, and that's uh, where we're, we're restricted to in our work area, which works well for me. Great, now, uh, we're pretty close to being done. What I like, what you're gonna wanna do is, uh, let's just make sure all of our layers are set up here. We can add our eyes to our uh, geometry layer here. We can go to our layers and actually we can lock off our geometry so we can't select that in the scene. We'll hide our joints so we can just clean up our viewport here and everything that will be selectable in our scene now will just be our controller. So have a play around with your, your guy and uh, move him around. You're gonna find uh, some joints that are gonna need some smoothing. So you're, you're gonna go back into your weight painting and, and you'll be smoothing out your uh, geometry and just make sure that everything's working correctly. Any questions, just please ask them below. And let's check out our head. Our mouth control is working nicely. Look at that. All right, in the process of playing around with this guy, I did find a few things that were off. In my eyes, I wanna add a uh, constraint tag to, parent uh, tag, maintain the original, because it's not moving with my object, and we're going to target that to our head bone. There we go. Now, our eyes are gonna follow along with our rig here before they were not attached to anything. So that makes sense now. And we can zero everything back out. And one more thing, let's make our head and neck underneath of our chest joint here so they're all moving with each other. Great, thanks a lot guys.